Hey, what's up AMC apes and everyone else? I'm Chico and thank you for watching this video. So quick follow up on last week, we did see Insidious, The Red Door and Sound of Freedom. Very happy that we saw the movie. It was every bit as good as we thought it was gonna be. Um, no spoilers, no reviews. This is more of a reaction type video and a quick, Preview of Mission Impossible, which we've been waiting a very long time for. Try to give you a different point of view. And let's start with Sound of Freedom, which as you can see, it is crushing it at almost 20 million over the weekend. They were hoping to only do about 2 million. And I know the expectations seem low, but nobody knew how people were going to react if they were gonna go see it. As you can see, it's already up to 41 million. So that's awesome. Uh, I hope that it's going to keep going now that reviews and people that have seen it are talking about it and spreading the word. Hopefully it's going to be around for a few more weeks and do even better. Uh, just in case you don't know, remember that if you can't afford to go, you can log on to angel.com free tickets and there's plenty left last I checked. Um, they really want you to go see it. And I would say so also because it was a very good movie. Yes, be ready. It is a little bit emotional, tough to watch, um, but very much worth it. The actors from the start, from the kids who play uh, Miguel and Rocio and their dad, adorable, makes it even harder to watch. Um, a little scary how easily and fast these things can happen. Um, give credit to the bad guys. They had a tough role to play. And of course, the heroes. Everybody in the movie was very believable and very good. They made it come alive and feel real. Um, I can tell you from the audience, it was a sold out theater. And yes, you can feel it. You can feel the emotion, the tension, as you should on films like this type. I know that uh, it can be a little difficult. It is not for everyone to feel comfortable in a uh, in one room with strangers and watch this type of film. You don't know if you're going to cry or, you know, just feel emotions that you don't want to be seen. I hope it's not the case, really. Um, we're human and we're meant to be among people. So keep that in mind. I mean, you wouldn't be alone <laughs> feeling emotional. Uh, if you do watch it, you haven't seen it yet. Make sure you stay through the credits and through the final scenes. Jim sends out another important message. Um, for one, I did not know that the film was done five years ago and it's taken this long to get out uh, for us to see. Apparently, there are some suppressing forces to worry about, but now that it's out, it's a good thing. Um, how much money flows through this mess? I mean, $150 billion worth blows your mind. Um, you know, the number of kids, $2 million unaccounted for, so... You know, it feels overwhelming, of course, but it's not meant to be that. The message we're sending really is to become aware, and that is ruffling some feathers. We are winning this already. At 41 million, it's a lot more than people expected, and word, again, word is getting out, and they're very upset. I'll show you here real quick, because I didn't want to give these guys any type of clicks or anything, because I can't stand them. I hate CNN. Yahoo.com here, Sound of Freedom. It's a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. Boy, nice words, huh? Then the QAnon, which, of course, they have to politicize this. Thriller about child trafficking is designed to appeal to the conscience of a conspiracy adult boomer. Wow. I'm not a boomer, but this offends me, even though I'm not one. This, offend, this would offend anybody. Now, CNN, my least favorite network, and the reason why I even canceled cable. CNN takes attack on sound of freedom to another level. CNN says child sex trafficking is real, but these films are created out of moral panics. It is specifically is blah, blah, blah. Who wants to know what these people have to say? CNN begs America not to see the sound of freedom, the hit film exposing child uh, trafficking. CNN had on Mike Rothschild to slam the sound of freedom as a fantastical conjuration of QAnon, fear mongering, and little more. 
That's all these people ever do, and I can't stand them. I mean, I hope that you don't listen to CNN anymore, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. I hope that if you do, if you do, and you haven't done your research on them, you should. It would change your mind, I believe. Of all people, of all networks to use the word fear-mongering blows my mind. We know how they handle the you-know-what, and this was their prime weapon. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to read these articles, go ahead. Again, I just didn't want to give them any clicks whatsoever. Um, get what I need to know from those titles, uh, even from Fox. Even the Fox has taken a better side of it, even though I no longer trust them. I love Charles Payne. I like Tucker. I still like the blonde lady. I can't think of her name, but not enough to subscribe anymore. Getting rid of Tucker was a big mistake, and I can't trust him anymore. On this, however, man who inspires Sound of Freedom hits back at CNN guest. Liberal reporters over grotesque criticism. Wow. Liberal outlets trash movie that exposes horrors of child trafficking. You know, what a surprise. You know, more of the same. However, some in the media have criticized the film and downplayed the significance of uh, what's going on. Come on, man. I mean, it is just a movie. We're all free to see whatever we want. So this type of headlines, they don't give you a feeling that they're being impartial or neutral or critics. I think they have an agenda on this. Rolling Stone. To, excuse me. To know thousands of adults will absorb Sound of Freedom, this vigilante fever dream and come away thinking themselves better informed on a hidden civilizational crisis. Well, it's profoundly depressing. These people have feelings? What? Worse still, they'll want to spread the word, which is what we're doing, so suck it. I mean, Rolling Stone, if I'm not mistaken, they were one of the outspoken people for, what was the movie? Cuties. Cuties on Netflix, the one with the 11-year-old girls sexualized. Oh, they they like that. That was okay. So I guess it shouldn't surprise us that they're against the one that uh, exposes child trafficking. I can't believe that they're still around, but whoever still reads them, I don't know. Do some research. Uh, it's disappointing that these things are coming out on a movie that we should be watching, but what can we do? Um, you should be aware that they don't want you to see it. There should be a reason why they do it, and it's probably a very fishy one. So um, I hope you don't let them discourage you. Again, don't be discouraged by it being an emotional movie. It is very well done. And see what you can do to support the cause. I think, as you can see, we're actually starting something here. And if it continues to be strong, it's a good thing. Okay, so let me go and move on to the other movie we saw, of course, was Insidious. And we are huge fans not going to lie, I don't even need to know anything more than they made another movie and we're going to go see it. It's the case on this. Insidious was fun. It's more of the same. Don't expect a groundbreaking, uh, great horror movie. But, you know, Patrick uh, and his son Dalton on this, they were, they were really good. More of the same. You get an end to, or at least I'll assume it's the end to the Red Door series. Um Again, any movie that comes from these guys, the Blumhouse brothers, the Blumhouse and, excuse me, uh, James Wan, the director. Uh, really looking forward to The Nun too. We love The Nun, uh, all the Conjuring series. If you're a fan, I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's just more of the same, but in a good way. So don't miss out on The Red Door. Um, and finally, of course, Mission Impossible. Now that's coming up this week. I think it actually... Some people got to see it early today. Um, we'll see what they say. I expect big things from this movie. Uh, Tom Cruise hasn't disappointed. He is, I believe, one of the good guys left in Hollywood. So, again, it's a matter of putting our dollar on the things that we want to see. Um, it's been well over, I don't even know if it's been two years since we saw first saw the previews to this. And then I remember seeing, like, oh, man, it's like another two years before we see it. I, don't even know. But I'm going to see it because of this guy, Esai Morales. If you don't know who he is, he is Richie Valens' brother on La Bamba in 1987. So it was a long time ago movie, but one of the best of that year for sure. And one of the favorite by Latinos and anyone else who's seen it. If you like music, 
in case you haven't seen La Bamba, if you're so young, check it out. Um, a classic. And anybody who has seen it, remember, can you believe it? That this is actually Richie Valens' brother. Look how good it looks at his age. I'll remind you to one of the best cinema scenes ever. And sorry for the quality because it is the only one I can find. But remember this? Expected. I don't have a life here. You're always gone. Do you think I like being here alone? Look, Rosie, you're not my wife, all right? Stop being such a drag. Hey, yeah, Rosie. I'm sitting you anyway. Man. I'm pregnant. Oh, no. Well, aren't you going to say anything? Well, what's there to say? It's not my first. Or my last. Oh, damn. If that isn't one of the best cinema lines ever. And don't let that ruffle your feathers. Uh, he is a really good actor. I thought so then. I remember he probably should have won an Oscar for that. Man, he, That was a tough role he had to play as his brother. Uh, nobody liked him. Drunk. Unfortunately, this is the truth for many uh, Latinos. But yeah, uh, it's Simon Morales, man. He was good. So it's good to see him now getting a good role. I hope he does good. I uh, don't want to leave that bad memory of him in your head. So remember, how he was actually a good guy. He turned out to be a good guy. It was just a tough time for him. People can't change. Um, so remember this scene. 17, this youngster from Pacoima, California, won a place at the top of the charts with his hits Donna, La Bamba, and Come On, Let's Go. Valens was still in high school when he was signed to the Delphi label. And just a brief eight months later, Richie Valens is gone. No. And now? No. Selection in honor of the dead. Not Richie. Not my Richie. Fuck oh, my Richie. Not Richie. Not Richie, Bob. Oh. <laughs> Remember, she hated him. <laughs> Again, if you're too young to have seen it, put it on your list. This movie was a classic. Anybody who's seen it will tell you so. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you for those who watched this video. Um, I was about to quit on Friday. I told Red Zoom that eh, I don't think it's working out for me, but I actually got a little boost of subs. I really appreciate the people. I think, I don't know, seven, eight people. Uh, it's a few, but I really appreciate you joining. Uh, I think if you give me a chance, I'm going to try a little longer, see if I can keep this going. Hopefully, it'll get better. Um, so, yeah, thanks, and I'll see you on the next one. Go see Sound of Freedom. If you haven't, do what you can. Um, I don't believe you'll be disappointed. It was a very good, touching movie. All right, see you on the next one.